All right, all right, we finna get into it. We about to get into it here today. So uh, you can unmute yourself, brother. And uh, for those who don't know who you are, please introduce yourself and what we will be doing today. Assalamu alaikum. My name is brother Boris Muhammad. Some of you may know me on Facebook. I just post what I believe to be truth, um, witnessing to the truth of the Honorable Elijah Muhammad and the Honorable Minister Louis Farrakhan. Um, I just like to add on with knowledge and how I see things and do my best to represent as best as possible. Yes, sir. Um, yeah, and right now, um, Brother Willie has sent me a link to a, a, a brother um, posting a, a video that he says there was some contradiction in the Supreme Wisdom Lessons concerning the year one. And I viewed the video, and as I, I, I watched him explaining and giving his math, I noticed that his math was off. And uh, I, I wanted to share my, my thoughts on how he is off in his mathematics, and that there was no contradiction as far as the year one is concerned. All right, so what we're gonna do, fam, we're gonna do a little commentary. So we're gonna go right into the video. Um, and then you can stop me as you please. And yes, uh, we're going to listen to the video and then we're going to uh, correct it. Peace and greetings to the East family. This is Illuminati Light. And I'm your host, Majesty Montanez. So in this episode here, which is part of a lecture series that we're doing on the supreme wisdom lessons of the nation of Islam, we're going to deal with what is known as the year one of the Islamic calendar in the nation of Islam teachings known as the supreme wisdom now if you want to read these lessons all you have to do is buy the book the supreme wisdom because it's been published you know um, anyway uh, before I begin, I want it to be understood that none of what's being presented here is meant to discredit the nation of Islam or anything to that effect. Uh, these teachings called the Supreme Wisdom Lessons helped a lot of us growing up, including myself. You know, as a young man, I uh, counted these teachings and they were very helpful to me. Brother, Brother Ben? Um, yes, but, sir. Yes. I wanted to make a comment here. Okay. Brother mentioned that the Supreme Wisdom Lessons, you can purchase it, the book, because it's been published. Now, I don't know what book he, he has available to him, but uh, this book here, I, I got in um, Savior's Day in 1995. So it's a 25-year-old book. I still have it. Um, when you continue with the brother's video, when he quotes the lesson, you know that he's not quoting from the book that I just showed you. Mm. All right? So I just wanted to make that point. So I, I think he's reading from an online, uh, online lessons that he, you know, that's on, online, and I don't know who, who printed it, but that's where the math, I noticed that the same math was in the other lessons that are online. And that's definitely a mistake, and he's going to, He's going to say what the mistake is, and I'll stop you, or stop, you know, ask you when to uh, speak on it. You can continue, brother. Yes, sir. Thank you for pointing that out. Thank you for pointing that out. We're going to be doing a series of lectures on these teachings because they're important to be familiar with if you're involved in the work of enlightenment, especially uh, if you're doing that work in the urban areas, right? So, we're going to get into these uh, teachings here, and here on this episode, we're going to deal with a contradiction in the lessons. Now, don't take that to mean, again, that we're discrediting the nation of Islam and the work of the nation of Islam. We're certainly not. This is just something to keep in mind when you study these lessons, right? So... We'll we'll vibe more or we'll build more as we progress. So in the 
the supreme wisdom of the nation of Islam and the lost found Muslim lesson <clears throat> excuse me and the lost found Muslim lesson number one question four the year one of the Islamic calendar according to the nation of Islam is mentioned and I'm, I'm going to tell you what that year is and I'm going to demonstrate that there's a contradiction overall My right God, this in these is some main lessons talking. of the, the teachings <laughs> yeah. of the nation of Islam yeah so um in question number four of Lost Found Muslim Lesson number one, remember that these lessons, according to the supreme wisdom, quote unquote, itself, these lessons were written and they were written by Master Farah Muhammad and answered by Elijah Muhammad, right? In the year 1934. Can I, can so, I stop you right there or stop the let's, video? Let's, yes, sir. That is wrong, what the brother just said. Mm. He's saying that the lessons, all six written lessons were written in 1934. That is not the case. He's going to be quoting from lesson number two, question number 40. And in that it says that, this lesson number two was given by Prophet W.D. Farad, which contains 40 questions answered by Mr. Elijah Muhammad, one of the last founds in the wilderness of North America, February 20th, 1934. It only says this lesson was written in 1934, but the brother says the lessons, all six written lessons, was written in 1934. That is a mistake or that is wrong. Yes, sir. Thank you. Let's get into question number four of the lost found Muslim lesson number one and what this tells us about the so-called year one of the Islamic calendar according to the nation of Islam teachings all right so question four asks why did we run Yaqub and his made devil from the root of civilization over the hot desert into the caves of West Asia as they now call it, Europe. What is the meaning of you and rope? How long ago? What did the devil bring with him? What kind of life did he live? And how long before Musa came to teach the devil of the forgotten technology? And here's the answer. Because they has started making trouble among the righteous people telling lies. They accuse the righteous people, causing them to fight and kill one another. Yaqub was an original man and was the father of the devil. He taught the devils to do this devilishment. The root of civilization is in the Arabian desert. We took from them everything except the language and made him walk every step of the way. It was 2,200 miles. He went savage and lived in the caves of Europe. You means hillsides and rope is the rope to bind in. It was 6,019 years ago. Musa came 2,000 years later and taught him how to live a respectful life, how to build a home for himself, and some of the technology that Yaqub taught him, which was devilishment, telling lies, stealing, anyhow to master the original man. Musa was a half original, a prophet, which was predicted by the 23 scientists in the year one, 15,019 years ago today. So something you need to understand when you're dealing with these lessons is the Arabic names mentioned. 
Now, in Islam in general, and the religion of Islam, the prophets that you would be familiar with and the religion of Judaism and the religion of Christianity, those names have Arabic counterparts. So when you see Yaqub mentioned here, Yaqub is the Arabic name for the prophet Jacob, who's a, of course a mythological character. Um, and Musa is the Arabic name for the prophet Moses. This is important to note in, in this religious mythology so that you can do your own studies and come to understand what these religious myths teach. So anyway, um, according to this particular question and answer here, we are told that year one of the Islamic calendar is 15,019 years ago today. Now remember what I said, these lessons were written in the year 1934, right? So there's this mistake right there. Mm. He's assuming that that lesson was written in 1934. And because he assumes that, he puts the mistake on the lesson, but it's actually his mistake for mm. assuming that lesson number one was written in 1934. Because 15,019 years ago will get you to the year one, 15,086. Um, and he's going to quote lesson number two to bring about that contradiction. So if you just continue with the video, I just wanted to point that out. Yes, sir. So in order to find out what this particular question and answer is telling us is year number one, what you have to do is subtract 15,019 years from the year 1934. And when you do that, you're going to come up with the year 13,085 BC of the common calendar. Just that is only true if you subtract from when lesson number two was written, not from lesson number one, which was written in 1933. Go ahead. Okay, can you uh, break that down a little bit for those who may miss that? Can you go over that, that math yeah. one more time? The brother quoted uh, lesson number uh, one, question four, mm -hmm. where it says that um, Musa was a half original, a prophet which was predicted by the 23 scientists in the year one, 15,019 years ago. Mm -hmm. If you go to the year one, which was 15,000 years from... 1914. That is the expiration of the devil's civilization, right. according to Last Form Muslim Lesson Number Two, Question Number uh, 15. It says, "What is the exact time of the expiration of the devil's civilization?" Answer: Expired in 1914. So that equals to the year 15,000. 15,019 years ago, or if you add 19 years to the year 15,000 or 1914, you get to the year 1933. Do you see that? Yes, sir. So that's how, that's how you know that lesson number one was written in 1933, not 1934 like last found Muslim lesson number two, mm -hmm. which gives you a different figure, and I, I believe the brother's going to bring that figure out. Sounds good. No. All right. Okay, so... Therefore, according to that question and answer, according to what Elijah Muhammad taught, the year one of the, the Islamic calendar is 13,085 BC, right? Now, in Lost Found Muslim Lesson number two, which Elijah Muhammad also claimed was written out by Master Farah Muhammad, who according to the Nation of Islam teachings is supposed to be God in, in person. Um, Elijah Muhammad gives a different year 
for the year one of Islam. So let's read question number one of the Lost Found Muslim Lesson number two. All right. The question is asked, who made the Holy Quran or Bible? How long ago? Will you tell us why does Islam renew her history every 25,000 years? And the answer is the Holy Quran or Bible is made by the original people who is Allah, the supreme being or black man of Asia. The Quran will expire in the year 25,000. 980 years from the date of this writing. The nation of Islam is all wise and does everything right and exact. The planet Earth, which is the home of Islam, and is approximately 25,000 miles in circumference. So, the wise man of the East, the black man, makes history or Quran to equal his home circumference a year to every mile and thus every time his history lasts 25,000 years he renews it for another 25,000 years so let's examine that and what this particular question of the Supreme Wisdom Lessons tells us is year number one of Islam, right? All right. So, this lesson tells us that the history of Islam or the Quran will expire In the year 25,000 and at the year 25,000 is 980 years from the date of this particular writing. So again, remember that this writing is stated as being written in the year 1934. So in order to find out what this question and answer is claiming to be the year one of Islam, all we have to do is add 980 years, right? To the year okay, 1984. Um, can I stop the video? Yes, sir. All, all right. right. Uh, I may, made the point that this brother is using a lesson that is. Uh, has mistakes in it. The mistake that this brother brought out is that um, the lesson says, who made the Holy Quran or Bible? How long ago? Will you tell us why does Islam renew her history every 25,000 years? Answer, the Holy Quran or Bible is made by the original people who is Allah, the supreme being or black men of Asia. The Quran will expire in the year 25,000, 9,080 years from the date of this writing. The nation of Islam is all wise and does everything right and exact. The planet Earth, which is the home of Islam, and is approximately 25,000 miles in circumference. So the wise men of the East, black man, makes history or Quran to equal his home circumference a year to every mile. And thus, every time his history lasts 25,000 years, he renews it for another 25,000 years. The brother's lesson that he's quoting, he says 980 years. That is a huge gap from 9,080 years as the Honorable Elijah Muhammad uh, answers it. And I have the book that was print, printed and I got way back in 1995. I don't know what book he's quoting from, yeah. but it, the answer definitely does not say 980 years. Yeah, you, and I you, wanted to make, you, you I'm asked. gonna make a further point on that, that 9,080 9, years a little later. Okay, yeah, he's, he, anybody who got your lessons, he, he's absolutely right. I'm looking at uh, what Brother Willie sent me. I have a PDF. Uh, version of the uh, of the actual copy and it says 9,080 years from the date of this writing not 980 yes sir 
first. It's not all we have to do, but it's part of the mathematical equation. Because the this question and answer says that in 980 years from the date of this writing, the 25,000 year period of history of the Quran will come to an end. So you add 980 years to the year 1934. And that's going to give you the year 2914. So this lesson tells us that the 25,000 year cycle of the history of Islam, which is renewed every 25,000 ah, years. I found it. Hold on. I found where he got it from. Okay. This where he, this where he got it from, y'all. If you type in supreme, if you type in supreme wisdom, go down to this right here. This is where he got it from. If you scroll down, scroll down. He got it from here. Uh, I think I don't went too far. I went too far. Yeah, I went too far. All right, let me go back up. Dang, going too fast. <laughs> Get the laws. All right, let me move my cursor thing. All right, here we go. Let me find it. I'll stop you when we get there, brother. All right, it should be coming up now. That ain't it. There it go. There it go. No, that's not it. That's not it. That's not it. All right. Uh, after the 14th. So here, here we it's go. coming up. Here it is. Right here. This, is. this is where he got it from. Right here. Let me show you the mistake. Right here. 980 years from the date of this writing. Yes, sir. So he found it online, family. This is yep. why he is incorrect, which it says is for registered Muslims only anyway. But uh, this is where he's incorrect. So I'll continue. But I just want to let you guys know I found where he has the wrong supreme wisdom. So if any believers was using that website. Uh, you might want to go try to find an official copy. Ends in the year 2914. So, by, by coming up with that sum, the year 2914, to find out what year one is of this 25,000 year cycle, all we have to do is subtract 2,009, excuse me, 2,914 years from 25,000 years. So when we do that, what we wind up with is the year 22,086 BC as being the first year in the history of Islam in the, in the 25,000 Yes. Okay, brother Ben. Yes, sir. His his math is going to be so so off that <laughs> it's going to confuse you. I just wanted to speed up the process here. Um, Please, because he is oh man, he finna put yeah, us yeah. to sleep. <laughs> so me, if you look me at just, the answer, let me just take this off and you just go in from here. I'll I'll, I'll, I'll try. Yeah, cool, cool. I'll try. Let's, let's see that. if I can remember what he said. Yes, sir. But um, if you remember the actual answer by the honorable Elijah Muhammad, it says that um. It was 9,080 years from the date of this writing. Mm -hmm. if, if we did the math on that, if we add 9,080 years to 1934, it will get you to the year 24,100. That still leaves a 900 year gap. His brother, um, Minister John Muhammad, when he answered that, that question, According to him, it was 9,980 years. That would be the, an actual, uh, the actual answer because that would get you right to the year 25,000. Now, in that same lesson, it says that the nation of Islam is all wise and does everything right and exact. Hold on. Before you continue, Edward Moses yeah. says it's an approximate, homie. You both are right. No, that is incorrect. You can't say that 900 and then 9,000 it's like saying approximately. Approximately is, <laughs> hey man, it's it. I, it was nine eighty, and then I say a thousand. 
approximate is something is 58. You go ahead and throw the 60 on there. But to, but to go, man, thousands of years, brother, come on, man. That's not no approximate. That's a misquote. But go ahead, brother. Yeah. So um, it says the nation of Islam is all wise and does everything right and exact. I believe there's a reason that that is there. Um, lesson number two, it says that this lesson is answered very near correct. And all students should read and study it until he or she can recite it by heart, Prophet W.D. Farah. So it's answered very near correct. And this answer by the Honorable Elijah Muhammad being 9,080 years, it, it leaves off 900 years to, to actually get to the exact answer. So we can say that that was a very near correct answer. But he corrected himself. If you go to Our Savior Has Arrived, right? Mm. Page 12, the chapter is called The Time. And in this one, he says, I'm going to read it, if you don't mind. The original scriptures of the Bible and Holy Quran were taken from it, meaning that, that, that um, the, the year one, I mean, the, the whole 25,000 year history. And it was revealed by word of mouth and inspiration to prophets. We are now in the 16,000th year of this cycle and have 9,956 years to be finished before the next cycle. So here he gives the correct answer, 9,956 years. And this lesson was actually, I mean, sorry, this chapter was originally taken from the Pittsburgh Courier, April 5th, 1958. The brother printed by... I mean, the book printed by Brother Dimitri, mm -hmm. the Pittsburgh, Pittsburgh Courier articles. So the original article was written in 1958, April 5th. So if you add that, which would, that date is equal to 15,044. If you add 9,956 years, you get to the year 25,000. So as the instructions to the laborers of Islam tells us, that mistakes shall not exist among the laborers of Islam at no time, we corrected it, or the Honorable Elijah Muhammad corrected it, what is written in the last one, Muslim lesson number two, because the nation of Islam is all wise and does everything right and exact. Yes, so that's what I wanted to point out. Yes, sir, man. So y'all see it. Y'all saw what the incorrection was. The online version is off by a thousand, like, not necessarily like near correct, like the actual what's said in the lessons is off. It's not what it actually says um, inside of the lessons. So we see why uh, the math was off. And we saw that the Honorable Elijah Muhammad, which I didn't know, so thank you for sharing, corrected it and gave it in uh, Our Savior Has Arrived. And what was that chapter again, just for those who may have missed it? Uh, the the chapter is called The Time. The Time. It's called The Time. and it, Yeah, it's on page 12 of Our Savior Has Arrived. And it's from the original article from the Pittsburgh Courier, April 5th, 1958. Yes, sir. All right. Is there anything yeah. else that you would like to... Uh... You know what? That brother just he just goes on and talks, and there's nothing really... Oh, else no, that I exit off of that. I, I, man, I, yeah, yeah. I clipped that thing off. But is there anything else you would like to add? I, I think we... I, much... I just wanted to say, say something about my history, right? When I joined the Nation of Islam in 1995, um, I was blessed to go to... Savior's Day, which is where I got my Supreme Wisdom book. When I joined, we were required to recite the 20 statements of actual facts and the 10 questions to the student enrollment, questions and answers. I don't know how it's done today, but that's what I had to know in order to even get this book back in 1995. Now, as you mentioned before, in the instructions to the laborers by Prophet W.D. Farad, we are, we are asked to, you know, recite the lessons by heart. This is what I wanted to do. So when I was going to college, I was um, studying for sign graphics. But the Supreme Wisdom book, it just had me trying to memorize these lessons. I would go to the lunchroom because I didn't eat lunch. I didn't eat breakfast. I didn't eat no snacks. So I would just recite the lessons. I was... I will start from the instructions to the laborers, number one. And then every day I would do one or two or three. And, I'll, and the next day I'll come out and do another two. 
another three, another two. And until I was able to memorize the instruction to the laborers, um, 20 statements of actual facts, the student enrollment, rules of Islam, last found Muslim lesson number one, last found Muslim lesson number two, English lesson number C1. I've always had a problem with the problem book. I never got above uh, problem number 15. Mm -hmm. So I, I, I'm right, kind of rusty on the problem book right now. But all the other lessons, I still kind of have it in, in my dome right here. Now, let me ask you a question. When you say you yeah. have a problem, you saying problem, under, uh, you talking about problem remembering it's, them? Yeah, because it's a, kind of like a change of the language. Mm -hmm. Something about the language is different. You know, when you're in, you have a rhythm and you have a flow and, and you're used to it, but then when you get to the problem book, it just, the language is so different that it, it's kind of difficult for me. Mm -hmm. I don't know, maybe that's the reason. So let, I me, was able let, to... let, me, let me ask you this question. I know it's, 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 you know, your opinion, what you think, what Allah is blessing you to see. The yes. problem book, man, I know all kind of believers probably go through the same thing. When you see all them numbers and equations, you're like, man, listen... I ain't even pass algebra, man. I don't know this stuff. <laughs> so do you think, is it meaning in that? Is, is there something else you're supposed to pull out of it? What you, what you think about the problem book? How are we supposed to look at it and yeah. read it? There is meaning to the numbers, but I don't get into that. Mm -hmm. I get into the spiritual meaning of what's written. Okay. Um, give a, for give example, us an example. Yeah. yeah uh, problem number three speaks about um, a sheep contains 14 square feet. One tenth of a square inch contains ten thousand hairs. How many would a fourteen square feet contain? Now, the sheep here, if, if you know anything about the teachings of the Honorable Elijah Muhammad, the last messenger of Allah, he's described as a sheep. In fact, he's mentioned at, in the Book of Revelation as being a lamb. So this sheep here contains fourteen square feet. The number fourteen here is significant. It has significance in the time where he is to contain a certain amount of converts. 14 represents 14 years, 1400 years after Prophet Muhammad. He has that much time to raise the 144,000, right? It says the sheep contains 14 square feet. One tenth of a square inch contains 10,000 hairs. Mm. We've heard that number 10,000 before. It's the 10,000 hairs here are the 10,000 angels that are to help in resurrecting the 144,000, mm. right? So, as I don't really deal too much with the numbers, but the actual, what is actually telling us. So, the messenger here is, he is being told that he has 1,400 years to resurrect the 144,000 that was predicted. And once that 10,000 is raised, they will do something to, to actually bring that about. This is, in fact, what Minister Jabril mentioned before, that the 10,000, they're going to do something that will get us up. Mm. Yes, sir. See, that's heavy. See, because, see, it, it tell you, man, you got to, you know, after you solve this problem, you come back and you get a reward of $100. I ain't going to lie. When I first joined, I said, ooh, boy, we finna get paid, man. I'm finna answer these questions. Then you look at the question, you're like, man, I ain't going to never solve this problem, man. Mm -hmm. Yeah. yeah there's, there's so much in the lessons that if you just read it over and over. Uh, I read a letter by Master Farad Muhammad. He was instructing, I believe it was, it was written to the Honorable Elijah Muhammad, but he said if you read this problem 50 times over and over, you will be able to see the meaning behind the lesson. Just recite it over and over. 50 times, you will begin to see what it's actually saying. Um, so every now and then, I'm always reciting. And uh, I'll just recite it from beginning to as much as I know. And then the next day, I'll do it again. And Every now and then when I'm reciting it, something just comes to mind, and, and that's where I share it on Facebook. And Brother Willie saw some of my, my thoughts on it. This is because I, re, I recite it often, and I know a, a, a lot of the teachings and what the Honorable Minister Farrakhan teaches. So sometimes when I'm reciting it, things just click. Mm. I say, oh, this is what the lesson is referring to, and then I just give my opinions, my thoughts. Um, for example, English lesson number C1, in the divine sayings of the Honorable Elijah Muhammad, the messenger says that this is a 
defense lesson for the messenger. It says the C1 represents Allah and his messenger, C1. But then at the end of English lesson C1, ah, it says to C1. ask for, yes, ask for English lesson number C2, which will give you a reward of a certain amount. So if you see one, you see the, the messenger in English lesson C1. What is the English lesson number C2? Who is C2? I believe the C2 is the Honorable Minister Louis Farrakhan. And that will give you a reward of a certain amount. Wow, man. That's amazing. Now, let me ask you this, because it's taught that this is the, this is the bedtime story, right, that we read to our children. Mm -hmm. English lesson C1. Why do you think... No, no, it, no, it doesn't say that this is a bedtime story. Okay, what does it say? The le well, the lesson well, not, say it doesn't say stop that, but reading this... that. Yeah. Yeah, go ahead. The lesson says, stop reading that devil's bedtime story to their children. Mm -hmm. the yeah. you, you should not do that. Mm -hmm. The devil's bedtime story is the stories taught in the Bible. Mm -hmm. That is going to put black men to sleep, mm -hmm. put them to bed. Yeah, because in right? the nation, we taught, like, you read, you know, you read this one to the children, the English, and see one. Yeah. I think Brother Ishmael said they That's had, uh, they, Mother Titan, they had like a rhythm that they did it with. Mm -hmm. Why do you think that was recommended uh, for, for the children? Like, you know, you know, as a child, you know, they probably don't know the understanding of it. So why do you think that was for, like, the children? Well, instructions to the labor says, um, spelling must be used by all Muslim girls and mothers to their children for bedtime study, also in regular courses. Mm -hmm. Spelling must be used. What is spelling? Spelling could mean putting words together, spelling, you know, alphabet, putting words together. But, you know, when you put a spell on somebody, when you just recite it so often, it just it is in the mind. Mm. So that's what you have to use. You're supposed to read it so often that it becomes a part of their being. You know, that's some deep stuff. Can you give uh, I want two more questions that I'm going to let you go? And I know they I know they want to bring you back, man. They say this is some deep stuff. Um, it talks about being able to see the lessons uh, past present and future tense right yes, is sir. there is there any lesson that you can give us an example of where okay we know that's talking about maybe back then but it's maybe a spiritual meaning or we can see uh -huh. and we can use that for like right now in present time well in uh, lesson number two um it asked the question tell us why he was successful in all his undertakings the answer is because the people who was where his followers obeyed Yaqub's laws. Regardless to what he told them to do, they did it. If not, they paid with their lives for every life they broke. Yaqub did not build prison houses to imprison his people. When one fell victim of the law, the penalty was death and was enforced on every victim. cross reference that to the instructions where it says that, um, number 10, I, I believe it says, uh, let, me, let me just refresh on that one. The restricted law of Islam is our success. At any time, anyone who fails to be 100% to the law shall be dismissed from his or her post. So in Yaqub's case, whoever um, disobeyed Yaqub's laws, they were put to death. Mm -hmm. In our case, when we violate the restrictive laws, we're not put in no prisons, but we are killing the self-accusing spirit within us. Mm. We are putting ourselves to death. Right. So spiritual death, mental death. And of course, the the Yaqub in history, we're not saying that Minister Farrakhan is no Yaqub or nothing like that, but he is the leader today. And um, he's not trying to make a devil. He wants to make us into gods. Right. Mm -hmm. So we should not be violating the, the, the restrictive laws or the laws that we are given. We should follow them 100 percent. Whatever the minister says that we should do, we should do it. Because we do not want to kill ourselves. Right? Right. Yes, sir. Yes, we want to become gods. We want to rise up. You know? That's become good. Become God. Last question is this. I've asked a couple people. Uh, they've given me what they thought. But what's your thoughts on this? It is where it talks about after learning mathematics, which is Islam, Islam is mathematics. It stands true. You can always prove it at no limit of time. Then you must learn to use it. 
and secure some benefit while you live. That is luxury, money, good homes, friendship of all walks of life. Sit yourself in heaven at once. That is the greatest desire of your brother and teachers. Now you must speak the language so you can use your mathematical theology in the proper term. Otherwise, you will not be successful unless you do speak well, for she knows all about you. So what is your understanding? What did you get from that? And my question is, who is she? I believe that the she here would be the messenger, the Honorable Elijah Muhammad. Um, or whoever is the one in, over the sheep, over the flock, mm -hmm. right? Whether it's the Honorable Elijah Muhammad or the Honorable Minister of Farrakhan, why she? Uh, the Messenger or the Honorable Elijah Muhammad, the Messiah, he, or the Christ, he always, or he taught us that prophets are always styled as a woman yep. because as women are to give uh, birth to a physical child, a prophet by his mission is to give birth to us spiritually. So the she in this situation or this lesson or this problem, I believe it represented or represents the Honorable Elijah Muhammad. Yes, sir. And uh, when it talks about that is the greatest desire of your brother and teachers. Now you must speak the language so you can use your mathematical theology. Who is your brother? Who is the teacher, and what does it mean by mathematical theology? Hmm. <laughs> um, I believe that your brother here would be the savior, Master Farad Muhammad. And the teachers, whoever was the teachers at that time, um, mathematical theology. You must speak the language so you can use a mathematical theology in the proper term. What is the language? Uh, the language here is the language of the number seven that the Honorable Elijah Muhammad mentions. Mm. We are not to speak on the language of the number six. The language of six is the language of the white man. Not necessarily the, the language of English, but his way of life right, in rebellion. Mm. We're not to speak in that language. We are out of that number six now. We are to go into the number seven. Because God is present now. He's comes, he comes to bring a new language, right? Mm -hmm. The new language is righteousness. We are to speak the language so you can use your mathematical theology in the proper term. Again, the proper term here, we're not speaking in the past. Mm -hmm. We're out of the number six now. The devil's rule is up. We're not to follow him. We're not to have the mark of the beast in our head. And we're not, not we're supposed to act it out in our hands. We're not supposed to speak the level's language. Mm. Right? We're supposed to speak the language of mathematics or mathematical theology. Theology, of course, is just a study of God. Um, who gave us the knowledge of God? Who brought us the knowledge of God? Of course, it was the Supreme Being Himself, Master Farad Muhammad. The one that represented that knowledge was the Honorable Elijah Muhammad, and he taught us who God is. Right? He wanted to make us into God's. So, speak in the language so you can use your mathematical theology in the proper term. Again, we're just supposed to be righteous and become gods. And then we will be successful in what we are trying to do. Yes, sir. Okay, I know I said last question, but this is honestly the last question. In English yes, lesson C1, it says, my name is W.F. Muhammad. I came to North America by myself. Now, who is, it says now, my uncle was brought over here by the trader. 379 years ago, my uncle cannot speak his own language. Who is the uncle, and why is the word uncle used? The Honorable Elijah Muhammad said that Master Fah Muhammad used the word uncle to refer to all of the lost towns. Mm -hmm. right? So the uncle is just the lost towns that were bought over here by the trader 379 years ago. Um, that would be the year 1555. Mm. Right. Um, so black people were taken from East Asia in the year 1555, 379 years ago from the date of that right. That writing was in 1934. Right. So that will give you to 1555. So the uncle is referring to the last founds. Why are they referred to as uncle? Because as an uncle is the father's brother, the master was trying to say that or tell us and teach us that 
he is related. He is one of us. We are related. Right? It is not for us to say that because we're your uncle, you should submit to us. I don't think he meant it that way. All right? Mm. Mm -hmm. Thank you, man. Thank you. Well, I'm telling you, man, I know yes, you're sir. probably going to go back and look at the comment, but they loving it in the comments. They want to bring you back. Um, and, I, and I thank you because I was reading um, the table talks and a brother yes, asked sir. the Honorable Elijah Muhammad, and I can almost hear the Honorable Elijah Muhammad. I think he asked the Honorable Elijah Muhammad about the sun or the moon. And he was basically saying, stop asking me about that stuff from way back then. You know what I mean? Like, mm -hmm. you just want to argue, basically. We can't prove that right now. He said, get into yes. your lessons. Discuss your lessons. And after that, man, I just been looking and, and reading into them. And so that's why I end up contacting Brother Willie. Me and Brother Willie was kind of going back and forth. You know, I'm asking him questions. He giving me meeting. He said, brother, you need to get with this brother Boris because that's what he do. I mean, he be on Facebook Man, and so I start to check you out, man, and that's what made me hit you up the other day, man. I love the breakdowns, and uh, it really helps us think a different way because, honestly, when I first came in, I'm thinking, okay, just remember it, then what? But now when you get yes, the sir. meaning and, like, how the spiritual meaning of it, it's like, oh, this is how we can use that right now. This is what that means right now. So, man, I thank you for your studying, man, and, and what yes, you sir. brought thank to you. the podcast today. All right, brother. Salam right. alaikum, brother. Salam well, alaikum, everybody. Walaika salam. Peace. Man. Boy, that was good, man. That was good, man. That's good. So we definitely, we definitely going to bring them back, man. Um, it's amazing to be able to extract the wisdom and spiritual meaning of those lessons. And like he said, man, let's just continue to read them over and over again. If y'all want to follow the brother on Facebook, his name is Brother Boris Muhammad. On Facebook, Boris Muhammad, you will see him. And I believe his wife, she has on green, he has on the shade. So just go to Facebook, type in Boris Muhammad, and you, are, um, you will um, be able to find him. So I hope this was, inf uh, was informative. Hope you all learned a lot. Uh, and, and, and inshallah, we'll be able to bring him back to build on some more of the lessons. And I have different people on as well, like Brother Wesley. We're we, we reaching out to Brother Wesley. Um, we're reaching out to other scholars, you know, who can under, who give us some understanding. Those who are around the minister, they may have heard the minister break down a couple lessons. And, you know, we need that, you know, as young brothers and sisters coming up in the nation. So I'm going to strive to do my best to bring you all that knowledge. And if you all would like to support, you can do so via Cash App, Dollar Sign, Brother Ben X, uh, Cash App, Dollar Sign, Brother Ben X, and if you guys would like to support the books that we have, the programs that we have, you can go to www.brotherbenlinks.com. Also, this brother got a book. Dang, I wish I would have asked him about that. So I should have let him promote his book. But he has a book called uh, Master Far Muhammad Refuting the Myths. Yeah. Master Far Muhammad refuting the myths and he said i have available the messiah elijah muhammad is still physically alive so man you heard your brother get at man you probably know that book gonna be boom with with some receipts and sources so he has a book family called uh master far muhammad refuting the myths so y'all go check him out thank you all for listening thank you all for commenting thank you all for sharing who did you have a blacktastic day assalamualaikum <laughs>